हेलो शल वी स्टार्ट फोर्टी थ्री है अभी भी और शुड बी वेट फॉर हाफ सेंचुरी सर जैसा आप बोले आई थिंक वी आर ऑलरेडी ब्रॉडकास्ट स्टार्ट हो गया है सो वी कैन ओके तो गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग मैम आई वेलकम यू बोथ ऑफ यू एंड अदर पार्टिसिपेंट फॉर अवर सिक्स डे वर्चुअल वर्कशॉप ऑन डेटा मैनेजमेंट यूजिंग टूल्स माई एस क्यू एल आर एंड एक्सएल सिक्स डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी सो सर लेट्स विथ योर नॉलेज एंड प्लीज एंड लाइट एन थैंक यू सर uh hopefully uh, we will be uh, i think yesterday uh, sanjila ma'am has taken up up to vectors and uh, sanjila we will be looking at uh, the next topics uh, for today uh, i was just hoping that uh, ma'am uh, do we want to quickly revise a few things from yesterday so that by the time everybody joins in so, yes yes we can minutes. revise i am sharing the screen दिख नहीं रहा। I'm trying to share it. It is not taking. Show screen पे क्लिक कर रहे हो, nothing is happening. Okay. It is showing waiting to view Professor Asif screen. Take second. Maybe let me let me, maybe match मेरा कुछ sharing चालू है क्या? Change presenter करना. एक सेकेंड लेट मीस हाउ डू आई डू दैट मेक मी एज प्रेजेंटर देन यस या नाउ आई एम एबल टू गेट ओके सॉरी सॉरी गाइस थोड़ा टुडेज प्रेजेंटेशन एंड येस्टरडेज प्रेजेंटेशन वी विल सेंड इट टुगेदर डोंट वरी ओके यू हैव नॉट रिसीव ओके Uh, we'll send it to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yesterday we started with uh, basics of R. Uh, we uh, learned about uh, the environment of R. R Studio. We have seen yesterday that how it looks. It's GUI. We started with very basic operations in R. how mathematical operation works how do we declare variables how we can use variables so we first started with it then we moved toward towards uh, what are the different types of data types in which we have learned about integer data type then we have now learned about how do we assign uh, create a different kinds of vectors then what is a vector we have learned then how to create different types of vectors in which we have learned about integer vector complex number vector then we have learned about logical vector also and then we did a small uh, case study on two vectors that how it works and then we have learned how to name these vectors also so this is what we did yesterday so i think everybody is comfortable and we have also learned about indexing of vectors as well right so i hope uh, now everybody is comfortable and has opened their r studio uh, so i request everybody to open r studio if they have installed onto their machines so that we can start working with next data type matrices as if sir yesterday uh, somebody asked me when i am able to do everything into excel then why we are learning r so i told them uh, r course is for 5 days at the end of the fifth day we will be uh, you will be able to answer yourself why we are learning r so till then be patient instead of we are telling you why you are learning us uh, yes that If is you want uh, to true. add something to it <laughs> you can add uh, i i don't know i can give a very technical description of why we should, why you should be learning r instead of uh, excel uh, but i don't want to bore everybody but in a very short uh, answer is that r is far more dynamic 
and um, it can do things which otherwise in excel would either take a lot of time to do or would be very cumbersome to do see de manipulating data always in a spreadsheet is not possible unless if the data is uh, like it is not necessary that all data is two dimensional first of all pehla to ye cheez hota hai ki excel spreadsheet format hone ke wajah se we generally work with two dimensional data means rows and columns but in real world uh, many of the data has multiple dimensions like for example um, when we take it uh, take sales data when if we add uh, things like dimensions like uh, region time uh, like month wise year wise date wise week wise those are the time dimension fir aapka uh, uh, region matlab for example uh, maharashtra delhi gurgaon ya yeah, whatever you know you have branches may various branches so har ek jagah ka sales aur fir product wise agar aisa dekha jaye aur uske bare mein uske bare mein hamara data hai which is you know much more complex ko uske andar uska financial data bhi ho sakta hai ya uska order data ya purchase data ya whatever it is so there can be multiple dimensions then there might be different suppliers for different same kind of product matlab for example if you are buying the same product from multiple suppliers so then supplier is also a separate dimension for this and all those can not be visualized in excel very nicely you know you can do it in a two flat format but fir aapko usko manipulate karne mein aapne dekha hoga ki aapke bahut sa aapko bahut bar hota hai are yaar ye aise nahi aise hota to kya hota how to do that and then there are limitations in excel you can overcome them by doing some very you know um, uh, tricky uh, uh, manipulations but it doesn't work well um in r you can actually manipulate multi dimensional data very easily two you can work with a very large data set quickly and these are i think well, uh, even excel you know uh, has some limitations when, when it comes to the size of the data so if you are working with an entire database of data jaise agar aapka database uh, already kisi server mein installed hai to company ka database hota hai normally then working with that taking everything of uh, you know all of your major data and putting it into excel and then trying to manipulate it will be very difficult okay so um, there is certain limitations which excel has excel is very good when your data can be viewed in excel easily but if your data cannot be viewed in excel easily then what do you do and that is the problem that in real world today majority of the data jo hum log big data ya bada you know we talk about this huge amount of data which we collect from all sources it is impossible to visualize or manipulate such data uh, manipulate i don't mean in the accounting sir terms which is a wrong term manipulation i mean manipulate means uh, you know working with the data processing the data so to work with the data to process the data might be very difficult in excel at certain stages i am uh, uh, personally a big big fan of excel and i work on excel like more, maybe most of you all day in day out ghanto tak kaam karta hu to excel mein mujhe koi kharabi nahi lagti jahan tak possible hota hai main koi bhi aur statistical tool se dur rehta hu whether it is r that's why is... i asked him to uh, give you this because we generally uh, do a lot of discussions on to it uh, whenever a new tool comes i always ask him to use that and he never comes out of excel that's the reason he is the right person to give you this answer oh, believe me I, people have tried you know uh, um, maine I'll, i'll give you an example uh, just uh, uh, before the lockdown uh, mujhe company matlab mere mere director ne kaha ke you know asif we need to find a solution quickly to do login of our employees without biometric because hamara biometric login tha hamare institution mein sare staff teaching non teaching sab ka biometric tha to bole we need to do a uh, non biometric login but computerized paper pe likhna hamare yahan pe thoda sa you know we consider it uh, i don't know in a technology institute we don't allow non technological solution so i said sir you give me one day i will get i'll get it done in excel to sir ne mere ko aisa he frowned at me bole ki abhi isme bhi excel nikalega tu but uh, believe me I, i in one day within 3 or 4 hours i created an entire excel program which will read barcodes from my i card and uh, take my login and logout time and calculate my hours of work and do everything uh, within a few hours 
अनफॉर्चुनेटली अगले दिन पूरा लॉकडाउन हो गया एंड देर फॉर दैट सिस्टम वॉज नेवर यूज सो दैट थिंग वॉज पूरा ही लॉकडाउन आ गया तब थोड़े पहले कुछ रिस्ट्रिक्शन आए थे बट देर अगले दिन से टोटल लॉकडाउन हो गया सो बिलीव मी आई विल यूज एक्सेल टिल माई डेथ बेड जब तक मैं कोशिश कर सकू तब तक बट आई कंसीड दैट नॉट ऑल डेटा एंड स्पेशली वेन वी डू रिसर्च वर्क एंड वेन वी आर वर्किंग विद एक्चुअल यू नो a huge data set hum log we use the word data set you might you uh, use the word you know uh, huge files or records agar aapke paas uh, financial data hai you know and many of the times the data which you get agar if you are looking at market research data ya things which you take get from secondary sources you will get data in formats like json nowadays or formats like dat files or com, which are not very conducive to be converted into excel or are much you will lose some uh, uh, part of the data if you try to convert it to excel aise bhi problems aate hain so therefore obviously in those kind of situations we used to we need some statistical packages um, there are many statistical packages out there r is today one of the most strongest statistical package and um, is used world over whether it is in artificial intelligence whether it is in big data whether it is in data analytics and data sciences uh, whether it is in you know uh, uh, statistical analysis and actuarial sciences uh, mathematical processing uh, all of that and there are huge amount of uh, libraries which are available which you will see so sanjeev ma'am and i have planned some good uh, demonstrations जहां तक हो सके टू रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड योर एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट राधर देन मी टेकिंग डेटा ऑफ अ फिजिक्स एक्सपेरिमेंट और यू नो सोशल साइंसेस एक्सपेरिमेंट वी ट्राई टू टेक एज फार एज पॉसिबल डेटा फ्रॉम योर फील्ड ऑफ अकाउंटिंग एंड फाइनेंस टू सी टू शो यू हाउ थिंग्स वर्क सो वीव डन बेबी स्टेप्स we cannot start running before we teach you the basics so we've done the basic steps we told you how data works how data gets manipulated in sql now we look uh, learning yesterday and today we will be learning the basic syntax of r once that basic syntax are familiarized ho jate hain once you are comfortable with that then we'll start manipulating uh, a little bit more in detail so we'll deep dive all right so i think um mera bhashan boss ho gaya <laughs> uh, let us go hands on now so let's start with some um, uh, some practical stuff okay uh, so yesterday uh, we did with the vector so today we are going to learn about the matrices why we need these matrices uh, so we all know that what is uh, and how do a matrix is been written so matrix is basically a row and column data so basically in mathematics if we say so it is a table of numbers we can say a tabular structure basically that consists of numbers so today also we will be taking uh, some examples of it right so here in this example you can see a uh, matrix is been created with the variable name as d equals to and then there are uh, it's a 3 uh, by 2 matrix that consist of basically prices on first 3 days of the week and these are the prices of the securities right so what it consist of we can say that it's a matrix of prices of the securities on first 3 days of the week right so these this is how we can write this so here what do matrix d shows basically the number of rows so how many number of rows are there number 1 then number 2 number 3 so now three rows are there and how many columns are there so this is column number 1 and this is column number 2 so and how do we pronounce this uh, matrix basically so we call it as a 3 by 2 or we call it as 3 cross 2 so this is how we uh, say and always remember into computers whenever t we talk about a matrices it is rows uh, always uh, rows is given first followed by the number of columns am i making sense now what is a matrix so matrix is uh, here it is a for example which i am showing is two dimensional matrix with number three uh, rows and two columns and how do we have to say the rows always comes first whenever we have to represent a matrix followed by the number of columns 
so here uh, if we say on the first day the bond was worth rupees uh, worth dollar 64 and the stock was worth dollar 31 so the first column is showing us the bond amount and the second one is showing us about the stock okay and similarly for second day the bond was a dollar 65 and stock was a dollar 28 and for the third day the bond was dollar 66 and the stock was dollar 35 so uh, this is how we create uh, these uh, matrices right now let we create do um, how do we define this so let us have some questions and we will solve them so how do we are going to define this so let us uh, define this with the help of what a vector so first i have taken in the form of a vector so let us take a vector first so here i have taken a vector as price data and all these are been stored into vector all six values are been stored into this vector uh, so then later on from this vector we are creating a matrix so how do we create a matrix so for that inbuilt function is there and that inbuilt function is called as matrix and then it takes a data so data is stored in the vector called as price data price underscore data that is passed in this and then we have to tell number of rows n row is called as number of rows so here we are saying number of rows to be 3 and how do it will do the entry of rows so here we are saying number of rows should be 3 by row equals to true now what does it means is by row means it should do first row entry first then second row then third and then so on so by row equals to true means it should will do the entry row wise and not column wise and then we are printing this so i let me execute all these commands for you in r studio so let us see this so let me write this as a price data so you can see here it is executed now so price data is been executed so let even we can print and see the result whether this vector has been created or not so let me write this so here i will be able to see this yes the vector has been created and now using this vector we are going to create the matrix so let us see that so yes it is showing that matrix has been created so let us see that matrix by printing its value yes matrix has been created now you can see here how it has come so row is showing 1 2 and 3 the so first index is what row number and then comma karke it has stopped because it is showing rest all data are from column and here if you see the row number is empty and it is showing it is first column and here it is showing it is second column so how do we manipulate first row and first column what is the number so number is 64 first row second column what it is it is 31 second row first column so it is 65 second row second column it is 28 so this is how we will be able to access data from this matrix let me share all these commands with you all so that you can also execute them and see yes okay now let us uh, see how do we can give these row as the names so how do we will give here row names as monday tuesday and wednesday and we will give column names as bond and stock so what are the commands so yesterday we have learned the commands are row names and call names 
like how we did it yesterday to the vector similar manner we will give here so what do i am saying row names to price matrix as monday tuesday and wednesday so it will give those row names to the price matrix i can uh, print also price matrix to see the result so you can see here it has given the row as names as monday tuesday and wednesday now i can give name to the columns as bond and stock so that it can make sense that for what this data is being stored so now i have given its column names also and when i will print print matrix price matrix then it will show me the entire thing row names as well as column names so this is how you can give names to your um, data and let me uh, send you this also these commands also so that you can run and see this magic of r that how we can provide names and make sense of this data or another easy way is what you can directly give them with dimension names right so with the help of another function that is called as dimension names you can give with it and then you have to create a list structure yesterday we were talking about that list that list consists of multiple lists inside it so one we are saying is monday tuesday wednesday because we know it takes rows first into a matrix so these names will be given to the rows and second we have taken c c function remembered everyone combine function which is used to create values basically which is used to create a vector so first is a vector for the rows and second one is the vector for naming the columns so this is all this in this way also we can provide names to it so let me execute this and this again so you can see it has taken the names so this is an alternative to the above commands that if you want to do the same thing into a single line you will be able to do this by row is a false by default so it makes entries column wise and if we make it true then it takes row wise right i think uh, now this now suppose we want to see what is the bond price on third day so if i will ask you how you are going to print what is the value of bond on third day do anyone will give me reply that how you will be able to write that access that if i want to know what is the price of bond on third day if i need yes access row 3 and column 1 very good and what will be the command for it so command is we have stored into price matrix you can see here matrix and matrix we show with the help of square brackets so in square bracket you have to write is third row and first column so then it will give you that so you can show see that it has returned the value as what 66 so on third day the price of bond was 66 dollars so it has shown that so in this way you can access a data for a particular day and second thing now suppose we want to see for the second second uh, we want to see the data what are the stock prices in the second column right you can see here stock is a second column so i want to see the data on to the stocks all data
is what uh, I don't want to see bond data, but I want to see is uh, stocks of all the days. So how do I can get that? So for that, the command is what I want all rows. So what I will do is in the case of rows, I will make it empty. When I will make it empty, it will take all rows. And in columns, I will say two, then it will take is second column. So what will happen? All rows uh, and second column. So when I enter this, so what it will show me, what was values on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you can see here, stock on Monday was 31, on Tuesday it was 28, and on Wednesday it was 35. So it has returned me the correct. right so you can uh, have this like uh, individually also or you can have it combinedly also or you can see here we can use a colon also for continuing element suppose the query is get a stock prices for tuesday and wednesday now see here uh, listen the query uh, uh, carefully it says uh, shows us the stock prices of tuesday and wednesday Tuesday and Wednesday, the stock price. So stock price is column two. We have seen on the top, right, in this command. And then it is showing us that give the, us about Tuesday and Wednesday. So how do I will get Tuesday is row number two and Wednesday is row number three. So what I will say, start from row number two, go up to row number three, and show me data of only column number two. So this is how this data will get printed. So on Tuesday, the stock price was $28. On Wednesday, it was $35. So shall I send you all these commands? How you can do this? So that you can also execute. But I thought you um, people will be doing it simultaneously with me. Okay. Now let us do some kind of arithmetic operations onto these matrices. Uh, first, let me show you. Let us read what we are going to do here. What? Suppose, uh, let us say that you hold five quantity each of this bond and stock. So, whichever it is mentioned, so there were three bonds and three stock values were given. And suppose you hold hold five quantity each of them. So we can multiple, what we will do is, we can multiply the price matrix to get, get the dollar holding of value of your assets. And where do we will store them? We will store them into a matrix called as portfolio value. What we are going to do now, we are going to multiply this matrix by five. And we will store it into a new matrices called as portfolio value. Now that we have put your portfolio values, we can calculate the total portfolio value on each day by adding the values of stocks and bonds. And this we can do with the help of a function called as row sums. And this we will store into a vector called as day, days total. So why do I'm telling you this is what we are going to do next. And then next, we now have a new vector which contains daily portfolio value totals, but it is not the part of portfolio value matrix. Remember this, it's a different one. Now we can add the day's total vector to the main matrix and which function we will use then. So for that, we use a function called as C bind. Okay. And that is called as what? C bind. Ma'am, uh, there is a question. Uh, hmm. Somebody said, ma'am, have, have you shared commands as previous commands used as dim is not showing. Dim. As yeah. previous commands used as dim, dim. is not showing. As... 
so do one thing uh, in uh, dimension names now you change the names and see the difference give the name as bonds give the name as stocks instead of bond and stock and then see the difference see here uh, let me let me show you okay so what do i am saying here is here it is monday so let me write monday full tuesday full to see this wednesday and then i am saying here is what bonds and stocks okay so let me execute this so it has been executed and let me run this price matrix okay so it has taken this monday tuesday wednesday bonds and stocks नहीं नहीं मैम वो डिम नेम्स का जो लाइन है ना आपने चैट में नहीं डाला है शायद इसलिए उसको उनका ये क्वेश्चन था आई थिंक वो डिम नेम्स वाला लाइन आपने चैट में नहीं डाला है डाला हुआ है 624 पे डाला हुआ है हां 624 पे आई हैव केप्ट दैट अह आई पुट ऑन एट 624 नहीं मैम एक वो लाइन छूट गई है सॉरी वापस डाल दूं डली हुई तो है चैट बॉक्स में इट इज शोइंग आई विल पुट इट अगेन Uh -huh. and after that run this command price okay yes okay now uh, next what we will do okay let me go again what we are uh, what i am saying is what kind of operations we are going to do so first we have a price matrix you have seen that we have created and that consists of what three days a bond amount and a stock amount now we are saying that you consist of five quantity each of this bond and stock so what we will do we will create another matrix out of it where we will say that it consist of value of it and how do we will store this then we will do price matrix multiplied by 5 that will give me another matrix portfolio value that will be having actual values of your assets then next what we are doing is now we have portfolio values we can calculate the total portfolio value on each day and how do we will get this by adding the value of stocks and bonds and with this what which function we use so for that we are going to use a function row sums and we will store it into a vector called as days total now see here this is a matrix portfolio value and this days total is a vector that will store three days total information and then we have to add this vector which contains daily portfolio value totals but it is not the part of portfolio value matrix remember this so we can add this days total vector to the main matrix using which function so for that we need to use this c bind function right so we can calculate the average portfolio value also using this period so the values are in the column so we can use is call means so we will be having uh, average also and we will store these averages into a vector called as days average and finally we will add this days <coughs> sorry days average vector as a new row to our main matrix सो कॉलम्स का भी ऐड हो गया इसका भी ऐड हो जाएगा सो एंटायर मैट्रिक्स व्हिच विल बी क्रिएटेड पोर्टफोलियो मैट्रिक्स इट विल कंसिस्ट ऑफ द वैल्यूज देन टोटल एंड देन एवरेजेस सो लेट अस सी हाउ वी कैन डू दैट सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज व्हाट दैट यू हैव टू प्रिंट योर प्राइस मैट्रिक्स अगेन लेट मी स्टार्ट विद इट लेट मी डिलीट एवरीथिंग व्हाट वाज रिटन हियर and let we start it with price matrix as fresh so you can see that it has shown me the price matrix because it was stored into this uh, it is in the memory and you can see here uh, from the environment also that it is showing here this price matrix it will be showing here so it was there i have not deleted actually this so you can see here into the global environment in data it is showing price matrix so it is still there so commands delete kiya hai maine screen clear kiya hai but environment mein data is there so data doesn't gets deleted then next we have to uh, multiply everything by 5 so it is so simple to do that multiplication if you use any other uh, things so it does is what matrix multiplication remember this 
but uh, r it doesn't do matrix multiplication directly until or unless we tell it to do matrix multiplication so it will do only number multiplication so when it has been said price matrix into 5 so it will multiply every value in the matrix by 5 so let me execute this so then i can print portfolio value and see whether this matrix is being created properly or not so i'm writing this and you see that everything is being calculated everything is being multiplied by 5 so these are my values in my portfolio now this is my portfolio i am creating my portfolio then what is a days total so for that we are creating another one a vector days total and the function taken is what row sums portfolio value so it will do row wise sum so 320 plus 155 as one value, 325, 140 as another value, and third value will be 330 plus 175. So it will store is days total. And let me print days total also to see the result. So here you can see the results. So it has shown the result also. So yes, it has shown us this. So let me give you all these commands. You execute till this and see how it is working. So I've sent all the uh, commands in the chat window. So you can also do. Now, next was what that we have to add this days total to the main matrix and we are going to create a this. So what we are taking here is portfolio value totals and we are using is a C bind function. So here we are saying bind it with portfolio value may what should it bind days total and let me see what it has done with this. So whether it has been binded properly or not. So let us print this and see how it works. So yes, it has bounded properly. We can see here. So what was the heading here? Days total was the heading. So heading has come as day total and all the values have come here. So bond, stock, their values and days total have come. Yes, sir. Uh, there is a small question. Uh, is there a difference between row sum and row sums? Hello. Yes, yes. We can. Uh, you, uh, I have not uh, tried it. Okay, what is the difference between the two? So let me try it now. Whether it works it or not. I think row sum will take only single row ka sum. Let me try this. Ha, it will take for only single row if I have. And row sums is going to take for a matrix ke entire rows one by one. So this is the difference. So row sum will work, I think, uh, for a vector then. And because it's a matrix and I want is individual row sums, then I need is row sums. right done with this okay so uh, then it has bound this also now let us uh, do for uh, 
average also so we are taking a day average so here it is what call means so call means is going to do what individually columns coming it is going to take and then it is going to add into this and let us see now days average so it will print in that everything so let us print this so it has shown uh, the day's average what was the average of the bonds what was the average of the stocks and what was the average of days total so me, uh, this has come and then let us add the average is this row to the portfolio total matrix apni matrix mein add kar dete hain so here when we have added days total so days total was added as a column so we use this c bind function but average we have to print at a, as a row so then we need a function called as what r bind so to bind it with the row is r bind to bind it with the column the function is column bind and where we want we are uh, it was our uh, matrix was portfolio value totals to into it what we want is days average a new row should get added and the name of the final matrix we have given as what final matrix so in final matrix it will get stored and when i will print this it will show me <coughs> both the things so you can see here it has shows me days average as a new row and here i am getting the average and it has been added so let me share these with you all you can bind column also and you can bind rows also and then see this how it works done everybody done so let us move ahead now okay uh, so here uh, in this example what we did is we did is what that you hold a quantity 5 for both bonds and stocks what will happen that if you have separate quantities like let we take example for bonds you have 5 and for stocks you have 3 each then it means the multiplication i can't do directly like how do how i did it for price matrix earlier that i created price matrix into 5 and i got the result so let us move back to the price matrix again and see uh, this and so it will show me my all bonds and stocks and their values now take an example that you can you consist of what basically five quantities of bonds and three quantities of stocks so if you have such kind of data then values will definitely change and how we can do that multiplication with this matrix so uh, for that what you need to do is first you need to create a vector with these two values as uh, first is 5 and another one is 3 and i am giving the name of the vector as quantities so it is been created and now what we are supposed to do we have to multiply it with price matrix in such a way that 5 should get multiplied with bonds 
and three should get multiplied with stocks right so in this manner it they should get multiplied so i can't write multiply operation directly so what do i need to do this is i will say multiply prices whatever price you have multiply this with diagonal values of quantities right so what we are saying as a diagonal so this is the function how we can do is this so multiply prices with quantities to get the values so what is it going to do it is going to create a diagonal matrix for the vector so that we can then multiply the two matrices right so let me execute this and then let me print the portfolio value and then you will be able to see that it has made the changes so 31 into 3 is 93 28 into 3 is 84 35 into 3 is 105 similarly 64 into 5 and so on so it has done this so let me share all this with you i have shared all these commands in the window chat window so that you can do this and uh, there's a question can we add one row for thursday or friday now into the matrix yes yes we can add always no issues you can add at any yes, time <laughs> Uh, somebody wanted to explain you the uh, wanted to uh, you to explain the command last command again okay uh, the last command is what what we try to do the quantities are different here uh, for bonds it that a person holds is five quantities each and for the stocks he holds is three then how do we will multiply these two prices with our matrix that bond ka all bond values to be multiplied by 5 and all stock values to be multiplied by 3. So for that, we have to create a vector, separate vector, one dimensional vector, and then we need to multiply it with price matrix. So here we can't do multiplication directly as we did earlier. That is price matrix into 5. So what it did, it multiplied all the values by 5. But here we need is column wise multiplication so for that we need to use is this symbol into percent signs you can see is multiply and then we have used is what a diagonal function that is going to do what quantities in a diagonal it will create and do the diagonal multiplication so diagonal multiplication ka kya matlab hota hai? this should get uh, multiplied to the first column and this should get multiplied to the second column a row thi na, single row so we want is diagonal multiplication that this five will get multiplied to the first column and this three should get multiplied to the second column so this is how it will work and then properly we will get the answer so let us uh, move no, to the uh, new uh, 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 percentage sign what does it denote it denotes matrix oh, multiplication. Matrix, how do we do in mathematics matrix multiplication? Yes. So for that, we use is what? Double uh, yeah, percent signs. Direct but, multiplication uh, we can't do, then it will do it with all the elements. Yes. Now there's also another question. Um, heading heading of the bonds and stocks in the portfolio of underscore value who nahi hai kyunki usko names diya hi nahi na row name column name exactly column name aur to humne portfolio totals ko diye hue the na names to usko isko name diya hi nahi isliye aaya hi nahi aapne kai english ki book dekhi english ki book
Okay, let us move towards uh, now a uh, next uh, data type that is a uh, factors. So factors, as I uh, said yesterday also, that it is used to represent categorical data. Like uh, suppose I have into a column like a gender where we are taking the data about the people. So here this gender will have uh, three categories, male, female and transgender now added into it. So then next is uh, suppose I have a column called as marital status where we will be having values like single, married, separated, divorced or widowed. Then for stock also, if we take, we can categorize them as a large cap, mid cap and small cap. So in R, how do we can encode a vector as a factor? So for that, we use a function called as factor. So let us uh, first create a vector which uh, for this example, which is going to categorize these stocks as a large cap, mid cap and a small cap. So let us see this as an example. So first, uh, there is a vector that is called as a stock vector we have created and given the name as what? Large cap, small cap, large cap, mid cap and small cap. And then we will use convert. We will convert this stock vector to a factor. And then we are going to print this factor. So when we will print this factor, it is going to show us what are the different categories used in this vector? So let me show you this as an example. So suppose this is what I have a data. You can say as a data. <coughs> and then I am doing is what I am using a factor that how many categories are there in this. Uh, you can take an example. Suppose I have a record of 5000 people. And then what are the different kind of categories they have invested into? So then you will get those factors. So usko hum factors bolte to get the categories of from a particular column. So for that we use this factor this. So you can have any any number of data here. And when I use this, so I am going to get factors as that there are three levels here. One is a large cap, second is mid cap, and third is small cap factor means is to get the number of categories in a particular data how many categories are there so you can see that here large cap large cap is uh, you, uh, is twice in that small cap is also twice been written and you might have 5000 uh, rows ka data so we will put all the data and then we will try to find out how many different categories are available there like for into education nowadays, we are saying that uh, female students uh, should be motivated to take technological education because number of female students is less. So uh, uh, suppose we have that data, we can categorize into it that out of these rows, how many, uh, what kind of categories here are. So we will come to know these categories, two categories, girls and boys, and then what to be done. So sometimes data is so huge that we don't know how many categories are there. So we can get those categories through this function called as a factor. So factor is used to identify the categories through from a particular data. I have sent all the commands in the chat box. You can also execute this. Okay, now the thing is uh, that factors we can order them also. So, factors can be ordered or unordered. Like, uh, we can consider the gender factor male and female to be an unordered factor. So, there is no difference. But if we talk about these 
caps so we uh, know that here in this case so we need is a particular order so what we are saying in a stock vector order is true and levels will be what here we want so first is what small cap which is less than mid cap and mid cap is less than large cap so when we have set this levels so then when we will print this so how do output it will show let's see it practically uh, see here so what we are saying okay, you create factors from this stock vector which we have taken this large cap small cap large cap mid cap and small cap but here you have to order so what we are saying we have to maintain an order so order is true here and what will be the levels so in those levels first will be small cap then mid cap and then large cap so let me execute this and what kind of uh, stock vector may data it is going to store and we will see how it comes so you can see here how do levels have come then so it is showing that small cap is less than mid cap and mid cap is less than large cap when we make ordered equals to true so then it will take data accordingly okay let us see uh, the use of these ordered factors how we can use them so here uh, let us see what is the performance of these uh, let us create one more performance vector and there again we have kept is a uh, five data into it so in uh, first value we have taken that its performance is good per second it is average then third and fourth are poor and fifth is also good and then <coughs> we are going to convert them into the factors so we are converting them into the factors so what we are saying here so how it is going to be ordered as true so levels is poor then average and then good so this is uh, the order being set and then we will see this performance factor first so what it will show us as we all know we did it practically previously also so it is going to show us that poor is less than average average is less than good so this is what we got so now let us do this okay, we understood this and let we do summary of our performance factor so we have our data with us right as i was telling you that we can find out how many uh, girl students and boy students i was telling okay, now government has started working on to this that more girls should participate into technical education why do my this example has come being professor we have to deal with all these things so thoda both mera academics ke example aayenge right so see here so when i am saying a summary of performance factor once it is been set so in this data what was it so this was the performance factor we have taken so here you can see that good k values there were two for average it was one and for poor again it was two but because it is ordered so it will show first poor k value so in this vector two were poor one was average and two were good so it has shown a summary in this way so let me uh, uh, send it to you also all 
you can also execute all these commands and see the results that just by writing summary function it has done everything so this is the beauty of r uh, that you don't have to think about so much and by just using these inbuilt uh, functions we get it see here just only we have said that we want how many factors are there and then uh, we uh, didn't count it how many this uh, my sql may you have seen that we did is what group by count function we have done then it has sorted the data count star and then it has shown us these values but here just we did is what there was a vector that consists of this we have made an order and then we have said just tell us summary of it and it did it for us so no need to do any grouping data no need to write count star function and all that directly we will get results here Okay. So this is all about factors and all that. So let us move towards now other uh, basics about R, where we will be doing a bit uh, of programming today. So today we will learn a bit of programming like how do we put conditional statements or looping in R. So what do we mean by conditional statements is basically sometimes what happens is we need to make some kind of decisions. Like uh, we say if uh, my bond value will become this when I am going to sell it. So if it is, its value is this, so what do I am going to buy for my family? A portfolio is for the sale karne ka time hai. so we are going to sell it and if i will get this value i will do this and if i will get this value i'm going to do this and if the value will be like this i'm going to do this so when you have like multiple conditions how do we can write those so for that we use the general forms of decision making statements and these are called as conditional statements and we have two types of conditional statements sometimes it is what if if condition and then statements means is what if the value will come at this particular point i am going to sell it right so whatever uh, stock i have in my portfolio for a particular uh, company if the price will come at this uh, particular value i am going to sell it so this is one statement we do but sometimes we don't do like this what we say if the price will come at this then i am going to sell 10 percent if the price will come at this then i am going to sell 20 percent else if the price will come at this then i am going to sell 50 percent if the price will come at this then i'm going to sell all stocks of this company so this is a dual structure where we can say we have multiple conditions right so let us see this how it works so here we have to check the condition if condition is true then this set of statements will work if it is false then nothing will happen if we are using this simple structure but if we are using dual structure <clears throat> then if condition is true then true set of statements will work if condition is false then this set of statements will work so let us see a few examples on to it so here what we are doing is we are saying uh, suppose you have two variables the stock a and a stock b so here the value of stock a is 100 and value of stock b is 120. so then after this we can simply check by using this if function that whether a value of stock b is greater than or 100 or not and then we have to put that if its value is greater than 100 then we recommend you to purchase this stock B or we can say we recommend you to sell stock B whatever you want to print right 
So let us execute these and see the difference. <clears throat> How do we work with these kind of statement? So I have declared two variables. Right, and then a simple if condition. Now see the syntax very carefully. Right, so what is the syntax? Uh, so let me take it down. So what it takes if and then brackets. I always write condition into the brackets. This is the syntax. We don't have to miss this, right? So condition is always written into a bracket. And then whatever are the true conditions, they are written into curly brackets. Whatever a true statements, if condition true, then it will come to this curly bracket. So whatever true part may you want to execute, it is not only single statement. Sometimes it's a set of statements you want to execute. So all those statements which you want to write, you have to write here in these curly brackets. So let me execute this and see whether it gives me result. So yes, it has given me the result. We recommend stock B. So this is the syntax if and after if we, if we have to write the condition, condition to be written into brackets and then true statements, true statements written to be in the curly brackets. <clears throat> like suppose I say we recommend uh, you this uh, stock B and then what I say, don't go for stock A. Okay. So here I have given is what two statements. So you can have multiple statements. So it is going to print both the statement that we recommend stock B. Don't go for stock A then. Okay. So if you have multiple statements, you can write that in this. So let us uh, take another if else. Similarly, what it said that if the price of stock A is greater than B, then we will recommend you go for stock A. Otherwise, we will recommend you to go for stock B. Right. So this is what if and else condition. So let's take example for this also. So let us see this how it will work. So what we are saying if the stock A is greater than stock B. So you can see here stock A value is 100 and stock B is 120. Is stock A greater than B? No. So it will come directly to where? Let me take them down so that it will, you will not have any kind of confusions. Otherwise, wo samaj mein nahi aata kahan dara. So now it is perfect. So if and then there is condition which we have to check that a stock A is greater than stock B. So it is not true. So it will go directly to the else part and it will print we recommend a stock B. So let me execute and see this what it gives us the results. So what result it has given us? We recommend a stock B. Hmm. Else to be written after this curly brace only. So it is a very strict related to this. That if you have if or else, then you need to put else here along the brace. So let me put this into the chat so that you can check this also that how it is working. Similar manner, you can use multiple if else also. Okay, uh, now here there is a question for you all that what this value, what it is going to print. So, uh, so I have uh, let uh, somebody will give me the answer what it is been written. So you see here, what is the condition? I think So what it will print? What is written here? Stock A is 100, stock B is 120. And then we are saying if a stock A is greater than or equals to 100 and a stock B is greater than or equals to 100, 
then we will say sell both stocks else there is no recommendation for you so what do it will print then what will be the answer stock a price is 100 and stock b price is 120 any answer by anyone everybody saying sell sell both the stocks sell, sell both uh, stocks okay why it will give sell both stocks why it has given this and why not no recommendation because both the conditions are true it was and here so and says is what if both the conditions are true then only true part will get executed a value was 100 when it comes here a is greater than equals to 100 yes it is equals to 100 stock b is equals to or greater than 100 yes it is greater than 100 so both the conditions were true hence true part was executed okay so let us move towards another thing and that is called as loops in r so let us understand these looping statements so uh, generally we have uh, three types of looping statements for file and repeat in r and also r provides other functions for implicit looping such as t apply apply and l apply so this we will see in a short while all of these <clears throat> so why do we need a for loop is sometimes we need to iterate through something like with so iterate over a vector or we need to iterate over a matrix right so when we need to iterate iterate means ek ek karke ek ek value se jana suppose a vector consists of 100 values so we need to traverse one by one to all the values so then how do we will do that so for that we need a looping condition so it will start from value one and then automatically it will get incremented and move one by one to all the values that is called as iteration right and for that we use is what for loops basically so let us take an example here so suppose we have a vector as a this uh, where it is showing the prices of the stocks stock a that consists of total five stocks with the values as 10 8 9 11 and 12. now i want to print one by one all these values I can directly write stock A, then also it is going to give me the values, but I want to iterate one by one through it. So what is the uh, what is the thing we can write? So for that, I will say for i is a variable which will be initialized to one by default. Then it will come to the first location of the vector. Then we are saying for i in stock A. So first it will move to the first location. Then we are saying print I. So it will print the value of the first stock. Then because we have written into a loop, it's an iterator. It will move to the next value automatically and so on till it reaches to the last value. And in the next iteration, it will reach to the end of the vector. There this loop automatically gets stopped. So this is how it is going to work for i in stock a so i will start with the first location then next time it will move to the second location then third then fourth and then finally fifth. so this is how these loops basically iterate over these values so let us run this also and see how it is going to work so So this is a stock a created and then one by one we are saying print these values so it has printed all the values so let me put this into the chat box you can also see that how it works now here now what is uh, the um, 
why we learn these loops here you have seen that we can print the same thing by writing stock a to mujhe aage kyu jana pad raha hai why do i am using this for loop and i am unnecessarily increasing my work where i can do it just by writing a single value main itna bada loop kyu likhu see the uh, beauty of these loops is what you have a control over them your own control like here we can see that we can say that when i reach to the value 11 particular value 11 then stop the loop right so that i can do with them so what we are saying if i equal equals to 11 so when the value of i because first i will take the value as 10 then it will iterate over to the next value and it its value will become 8 then the third time it will become 9 and at the fourth time it will become 11 we are saying if its value becomes 11 then break the loop don't go further so now you have to tell me what this is going to print what answer it will give what values it will print then 10 8 and 10 8 9 11 okay okay then 11 see uh, what we are saying if i equal equals to 11 then break what we said when i has become 11 then do a break so i 11 hote hi break ho gaya aur baad mein hai value print i so it is not going to print that 11 value because it got break here so whenever i became see the sequence is what first it will take value 10 so i it will check here i is equals to 11 no then it will print i it will go up then it will ask what is the value of i 8 it will check here is it 11 no then print i it will get printed then again it will move ahead value is 9 is this equals to 11 no it will print 11 then it has gone to 11 it will check i is 11 yes break so when we say break it is the break of the loop so it will come out of the loop it will not reach to the well, uh, to this particular syntax that is print i so 11 will not get printed few of them you have given the right answer that it will print 10 8 and 9 yes it will not reach to 11 it it has reached to 11 but it is not going to print to 11 because before printing it got break right so making some sense here okay let me give you also this code now let us understand uh, what is uh, the functions in r and their benefit of it like you have seen a few functions previously also like how do we have used summary function and summary function is basically used to summarize any r object similarly we can use str function to learn the structure of any r object and let us see now how do we can use uh, the standard deviation function to find out the standard deviation of it so let us take another example for the stock prices for the past 5 days and then we will calculate the standard deviation of this stock so how do we can do that so first we need to take the stock we have already taken so let us execute the standard deviation of it so we will do standard deviation function on to stock a so what it has shown us that the standard deviation is 1.58 so the command is what just simply writing sd and our job is done All right then how we can take help uh, okay then next is what we have argument matching 
like uh, we can match uh, these arguments either positionally or by name so let us see here let's take an example here that first this is our stock data then we have calculated the standard deviation and then we are saying in this case you can see uh, nahi, isko chodo, ye, wo, skip karte hai. Iske itni zyada nahi hai. let us learn how to create functions in r wo important hai pehle. Mein us pe aa ha, functions uh, what happens is how do we can create our own functions in build to bahut sara what will happen if i want to create my own function so for that the syntax is you have to write the name of the fun uh, first you have to write function so function is the syntax from where we start writing the function then it takes the number of arguments which you want to pass on to which you want to work so initially it is what here we are saying there will be one argument passed to it that is x with whose value is zero initially and in the output it will print twice of this value so whenever you are going to call this function it will double it so what it is going to do it is going to print the double of the number which is passed as input to it and the name of the function what we have written double me right so here double me is the name of the function how it gets created with the help of a function keyword function here it takes argument jitne bhi ho sometimes you need to pass multiple arguments so all those arguments you pass here and what you want this uh, function to process that you have to write here so this function will process it accordingly right so let us execute this and then we will see here like you can see here when we have called this double me function and pass 7 to it so it has printed the value as 14 when 8 was passed to it it has printed the value as 16 so let us see this how we can write our own functions and we can work with them here this is the function we have written let me execute it and then let me call this function that is a print and what is the name of the function it is double me so what is the value print karana hai jisko double karna hai yaha pe to ye inho ne 7 or 8 liye aapki pasand ke numbers aap dal ke dekh sakte ho my lucky number is also 7 but let me change it to 11 and see whether it prints 11 ka double or not yes it has printed that double of 11 is what 22 so this is how you can write your own functions and get the job done let me share it with you all And even uh, uh, one beauty is what uh, you can have a vector like this and then you can see it is going to double all these values, right? So I have passed a vector 2, 5 and 7 and then you will see that it will return as a vector. So it has returned output as a vector that uh, double of 2 is 4, double of 5 is 10 and double of 7 as 14. So, and there's a question why x is 0. Where is the initial value to give it to him. So that it will understand what kind of data type it will consist of. Because otherwise so if other I will put only x. Nahin, uh, what will happen if I will put only x. So what value it should store it will not. Uh, machine doesn't understand. Its compiler doesn't understand whether it's a string input you are going to put what kind of input you are going to put into that so that's the reason you need to specify a data type 
If it is going to be a decimal data type, so then 0.0, .0 we will put. That's the reason we need to put this. Now, this is one example I have taken. If someone of you can explain what it is, would be better because it's in your language. It is being written in finance language. That a given yield per coupon period Y, number of periods to maturity N and coupon rate per period is C. The Macaulay modified duration of the bond then we can calculate it as follows so the formula is one divided by one plus y and then this is what a big formula is being taken so how do we can manipulate this so any one of you can explain this formula what it is Uh, uh, somebody has given the answer for this. This is a PV to FV number of year to which we give final FV. You are saying this shows percent of change in price due to change in interest rate. Okay, so how do we will write this uh, function then is uh, so the name of the function is any name you can take here MDUR. And then you have seen that you can write assignment operator either a left voila or a left inward or you can take equal sign any of these you can take then function we are taking three variables here y n and c which will be passed it as an argument and then we are identifying its duration and then we are going to print this duration and we have implemented directly this formula so always remember into the computers when uh, these terms are written and uh, directly you can see here it is written n and bracket may c minus y we understand that this is multiply but into computers computers don't understand by their own so we need to put whenever there is a here also there was multiply missing so we need to write this asterisk sign that it's a multiplication so we have to write these multiplication signs here okay and this is the sign for raise to power carrot sign so this is for raise to power and then it will work so inputs are there and then it is going to return the duration so here we have said that we have modified it to where for this duration that y is equals to four percent n is 20 and c is six percent so how do we will put this so we are going to put because it's four percent so converted value is what 0 0.04 20 so 20 will come directly six percent so it will convert it to where 0 0.06 and when it got executed it has given the value modified duration value so let me give you all these commands you run it and see how it works 
and whether it is working correctly or not also. So this is for the definition of function and then we are going to use it here. Right. So you can run also this function in this way you can write any any number of your own functions what are you, what you need and these are called as user defined functions because we as a user are defining these functions so in this case we have two types of facilities either we can use inbuilt functions and if uh, for certain calculations inbuilt functions are not available then we can write our own functions So it has given the value. I think there is a small uh, trouble from uh, BAM side. Uh, so just give me one moment. I will I will just take over. Just give me one moment. I'm uh, so sorry, uh, ma'am is uh, just offline for some time. So um, let me just uh, till then, let me just see if I can uh, get to, I can be with, with you all. Okay, just give me, just give me one minute. Um, one of the, some of the things which we need to cover, right? Um, so you'll have. Okay. 
let me do one thing. Let me just uh, share my screen. And what I will do is I will take you through. Okay. So because what I have, what happened is I don't have the same data running on my machine. Um, I'll just take you to a small topic which we will cover first, and then we can go back to when map comes to the coefficient of variation. All right. Um, this technical problem where those Um, Sanjila, ma'am, can you make me the presenter because I can't do anything without that. Is my screen visible to everyone? Yeah, we will share that uh, file, don't worry. already done this, right? is we are creating a function which will calculate the so that yeah, I think now it should be visible. So what we're doing, what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the coefficient of variation, okay, 
Um, so we define a function where we say this function, this curly braces is the start of the function, and this curly brace is the end of the function. And where we are taking the mean of the variable x, okay, and storing that in the mean value, and then we are calculating the standard deviation and then dividing the standard deviation uh, the say standard deviation divided by the mean value will give us the coefficient of variation now unfortunately so this would be the function which will give me uh, okay the function of uh, x will be put into the coefficient of variation okay now if I want to calculate okay, so now we will have a coefficient of variation function which we can use to calculate for any numbers so let's say if i use Sorry, so we need to basically give when you want to execute that function, I need to give the data there, right? So I've just forgotten the name of my variables because I was not typing. So sorry. Okay, so do I have stock data with me? Let me just check. If not, then I will show you with another data. I don't have any of the software. Now, what I could do is, so if I if I would have given the data over here, it will calculate the coefficient of variation. That's the only thing. So I don't know if I have any other. I have cleared everything out, so I don't have any data right now to ex execute. That's why it's not giving me. Let me move forward, then I can actually. Let me just create. The mouse is giving me trouble. <laughs> things, I'm, I'm, things that I'm not touching are moving. Just see if I can quickly take it there. Okay, let me just again show you what we did. 
So we'll just do a coefficient of variation for stock underscore data because we have already calculated the uh, we have this function called coefficient of variation. We can now calculate the stock data by just saying stock underscore data. So stock data jo hamara tha uska coefficient of variation nikalega. So I can just execute that and you will see that the coefficient of variation will be this. Okay, if I do SD stock underscore data. Okay, and if I do the mean of stock underscore data. So you will see that my standard deviation is 1.58 and my mean is 10. So if I do the, by that, I know that my coefficient of variation will be standard deviation 1.58 divided by 10, that is 0.158, which is my coefficient. Okay, so I can just actually, to demonstrate, I can write this after this. So now I'll just copy this and give it to you all so you can have a look. So you do it in this order, which I have shared with you. So first of all, the function, uh, I'm just calculating standard division means just showing you that how it works. Uh, you don't need to do these two. Now these two are automatically calculated within the function called coefficient of vari vari variance or var, coefficient of var, all right? A uh, shortcut for uh, visiting the previous uh, commands is uh, the up arrow, if I, if I want to. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so I hope everybody got the code. Um, I, have, I have sent it to you all in the chat window. Correct? Now, if I... I have uh, already shared, shared it. I have shared it. Uh, the next uh, thing is we are having uh, the air quality, ma'am, uh, inbuilt in our. Yes, yes, so it is inbuilt in, in our. Yes, it's inbuilt. Yes. Inbuilt. So, so yes, inbuilt, yes. inbuilt uh, there are some inbuilt databases which are available. Uh, if you want, you can uh, always check for those by uh, going to your console and writing data bracket bracket and enter. So now when you write data, bracket, bracket, enter, you will see all the databases, which are data sets, which are available inside, you know, uh, are in your uh, version, whatever version you are using by chance, if you're using a different version. So you can just do data empty. Uh, this command will give you your, uh, you know, all the data sets, which are in bit. So you can do data type data type. Okay, uh, so we don't need to type the data for everyone. And now in this, there is something called as air quality. Air quality. Okay, so I'm using this uh, data air quality. So I, this will function now. If I put the name of my data set, ye isko load karta. Ab I will we will teach you tomorrow how to load data from an Excel file or from some other database okay aaj kya kar rahe inbuilt data set ke sath kaam kar rahe we are using the inbuilt data set which we have okay see what happens is uh, whatever uh, tools we use for analytics nowadays first thing is what that instead of directly started working with data which you have so the thing is what that data is not real world data is not in the format in which uh, these uh, tools take processing right they do processing so generally data doesn't comes into that uh, yeah, real world data so what do these tools have done is they have made they have taken real world data but they have made it into a format in which they do their processing so first to understand how these tools work they provide you inbuilt a few inbuilt data sets right 
you can use any any tools nowadays even if you say python even if you want to work with r even you want to work with dot net microsoft has also st now uh, started their own uh, version in which we can do data analytics so whichever whichever tool you want to use you can use any tool and to understand that tool how it works what kind of functionality do they have so you can first use those ones and uh, understand these and then start working with your real world data because real world data is never a proper data we always know that there are uh, some missing values and sometimes they are not in the format in which we want so we need to do a lot of data pre processing steps and those are called as a data wrangling in our technical language so all those we need to do so uh, that's the thing so this is the uh, data sets which are available to you if you want to understand these tools you can see these data sets and uh, the sir which has given a command as head so head is basically a command that shows us a uh, top six uh, records of the file and it is uh, showing you the column names also and top uh, six columns it shows right so head basically shows this top six rows and if you put the name see you can see uh, sir has shown the entire data set also so there were more than 100 i think rows in this data set so you, when you have written directly the name of air quality so it has shown the entire data set but if you will say head and then air quality so it will show you the top six uh, rows along with the column names what are those so that you can analyze what kind of data it is and what are the column names here so in air quality it is showing huh, sir please continue Correct. so the air quality will show you the entire data set so for example the air quality data set currently contains 153 rows of uh, elements if i use head or tail there is a head function and there is a tail function so i can use head air quality it will show me the first six okay so the first six records only sometimes data sets are thousands of entries okay so then it becomes a big problem if i want to use that now hum logo ne jo function banaya tha coefficient of uh, okay variance i can use that function with the air quality database i will i can give any column so i am giving air quality dollar now you will see automatically there's a dollar sign dalunga open up nam de dega mujhe of all the columns which are there whether i want to calculate the coefficient of variance of ozone or I, whether i want to calculate for the solar or wind or temperature or month and it will give me the coefficient of variation there is also uh, another data set which is there which is eu uh, uh, stock markets ka data so i can load this data also Okay, now if I do a head, EU stock markets, you will see uh, these are four scripts. Jinka day wise diya hua hai. Actually, this data set is a very huge data set. Agar mein direct print karne jaunga, so ye do, ye char scripts hai, jinka unho ne jo char exchanges hai, mujhe naam, mujhe pata nahi, naam se pata nahi chalta hai mujhe but unke actual uh, closing values you will see that from 1991 to 1998 ka pura data hai, uh, with a frequency of 260 and you will see that there are so many records and it has omitted 1610 rows because maximum print capacity was reached so pura print karega bhi nahi. Uh, so stock underscore data I create kiya I'm so sorry I uh, just to explain that uh, you know we had created the stock underscore data agar aapke paas stock underscore data nahi hai so let me just give you so pehle ye execute kar lijiye jinko agar to wo people who are getting that error for stock underscore data just use this line and then use my code the previous wale okay uh, right now we are doing data so now if i want to calculate uh the using that function which we had written coefficient of variance ka i can calculate for anything so now we have two data set i have air quality and i have eu uh, uh, stock markets 
so if i use eu stock markets i can use any of the columns of eu stock market uh, so that is possible if i want to okay so air quality is easier uh, so smaller data set hai so let me just work with that uh, air quality dollar solar ya wind ya temperature jo bhi aap chahiye aap le sakte ho so if i use temperature i will calculate the coefficient of variance if i want the standard deviation i will use air quality dollar temperature ye uska standard variance hai standard deviation or if i want to calculate anything else i can calculate so i can use any column and use uh, analyze with whatever statistical functions we want okay I'm not audible, ma'am. Could you do audio issue? Me, just go. No, you are audible so properly. Audible. Might be their internet might be slow. Okay. Okay. Ash, thoda hai slow internet since from morning. Alright. So, um, should we go end today and then continue tomorrow? Apply function. Kal karenge. I think two minutes baki reh gaya abhi. Hmm. so i think um, we will uh, one of the things which we will do to, tomorrow is also to teach you how to import data from other sources okay taki you can use your data and also check so excel sheets so if you have any excel you can uh, import data from an excel sheet or a csv file if you have so agar aapke us koi bhi csv file hai comma separated value files hai i will we will teach you how to import that and then we will start working on You and even one, we one... will show you how to uh, bring my sql ka database here <laughs> which we have ah, learned <laughs> definitely to wo karte hain mam kal yes so, so we will we will start with that tomorrow okay and then we will work on that so we'll finish the uh, some things which we had planned for today apply function and all of that and then we will continue with that all right theek hai so that's it from my side uh, i think mr vivek is stand, standing by yes yeah, sir uh, thank you sir thank you ma'am for giving us uh, so brilliant explanation in this r uh, actually i was really not knowing this functions and everything but i really enjoyed the session and i hope all the attendance has all uh, enjoyed it and we will surely meet tomorrow for uh, just thank you sir thank you ma'am all right. thank, thank, you, you, ma thank you thank you have a great day everyone bye 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 sir bye ma'am bye bye see you all tomorrow